Hi, this is Ranger Heidi with Jefferson County Open Space. Thanks for tuning in to our Plant and Animal Survivors series where we will explore how unique adaptations help living things survive and thrive in their habitats. In this video, we'll go on a scavenger hunt to discover how plants are adapted to get what they need to live. Before we get started, let's find out what habitats and adaptations are. A habitat is the environment where a plant, animal, or other organism lives. It must contain all the things an organism needs to survive, including food, water, shelter, air, and space. Some habitats, such as a pond or river, have a lot of water. Other habitats are drier, such as a grassland or desert. Habitats can also be hot or cold and have many other special characteristics, such as being sunny or shady. Jefferson County Open Space protects a wide variety of habitats, including streams, lakes, meadows, and forests like the one here at Lookout Mountain Preserve. What other habitats can you think of? You might wonder how plants and animals can live in so many different habitats. It's because each one has special body parts and behaviors that help it survive in the place it lives. These unique characteristics are called adaptations. Plants and animals use their adaptations to get food, water, air, shelter, stay safe, and reproduce. Adaptations allow each type of plant or animal to meet their basic needs in their own way. For instance, a ground squirrel has strong legs and sharp claws for digging burrows. Adaptations make a species well-suited for its habitat. For example, a katydid's wings look like leaves to help it blend in or be camouflaged in its home in the trees. Some organisms behave certain ways to help them survive. For instance, if a cottontail rabbit sees a predator nearby, it will freeze in place to avoid being noticed. These are just a few examples of how unique adaptations help living things survive and thrive in their habitats. Let's look more closely at how plants are adapted for survival. Just like animals, plants need food, water, air, and space. However, they cannot eat like other organisms and must make their own food. To do this, a plant's leaves absorb energy from sunlight and, through a complex chemical process, convert it into sugars which it uses for food. A plant also needs nutrients to grow, which it absorbs from the soil through its roots. A plant gets water from rain and snow, which it also takes in through its roots. Plants must also be able to reproduce and create offspring of their own kind. They do this by making seeds, which can then travel to new locations to grow. Seeds are created when pollen moves from one flower to another with the help of wind or pollinators like bees and butterflies. Along with these growth needs, the ability for plants to protect themselves is also important. A lot of things eat plants. It can be hard for all living things to get what they need to survive, but it's extra tough for plants. Do you know why? It's because they can't move. Plants have to meet all their needs while staying in one place. That can be tricky with harsh conditions like fire, wind, and snow. A plant can't simply move to a new location where it is more safe. Also, a plant could end up growing in a place that's overcrowded or in a spot with too much or too little water and sunlight. Fortunately, plants have many adaptations that help them survive while living in one spot. Let's find out more by doing a plant adaptation scavenger hunt. First, I'll take you on a virtual hike at the Lookout Mountain Nature Center to show you some plant adaptations. Then, you can head out with an adult to look for examples of these in your own backyard or neighborhood park. Let's see what we find. Spines or thorns are sharp points that prevent plants from getting eaten by hungry animals. Some plants, like the yucca, have a needle-like spine on the tip of their leaves. Other plants, like a raspberry, have thorns along the stem. Showy colorful flowers catch the attention of pollinators. When butterflies, moths, bees, and hummingbirds visit the flowers for food, they transport pollen so seeds can be made. Much like cloth, fuzzy leaves protect a plant's leaf surface from the sun and wind, which can dry it out. Many animals also don't like eating fuzzy leaves. Berries or other fruit hold seeds inside. These seeds can move to a new area for growing when they're eaten by an animal, carried in its stomach, and pooped out in a different spot. Needles are small, so they don't dry out as quickly as big leaves. They also have a waxy coating, which helps keep water in. 
Trees with needles often grow in cold places, and snow slides off the narrow needles easily so their branches don't get heavy and break. Seeds protected in a hard cone or shell are less likely to be eaten by most animals. However, some animals, like squirrels, have sharp teeth to chew through these coverings. Those are the ones I found, but you can also look for these additional plant structures. Thick bark shields and protects a tree from insects, disease, weather, and fire. Seeds that travel on the wind are shaped like parachutes or fluff. This allows them to float on a breeze to new locations. Seeds that travel on fur are shaped like spears or have hooks like Velcro. They move to a new place by sticking onto the hair of animals and then falling off later. Large leaves allow a plant to gather more sunlight. Now take what you learned and see if you can find plants with these adaptations in the place you choose to explore. Can you find all 10? Remember, do not collect plants or any parts of them. This is a leave in place scavenger hunt. As you find a plant with each adaptation, think about how that structure helps the plant survive and thrive. What basic need does it help the plant meet? I hope you have a successful scavenger hunt and discover many types of plants. Having a wide variety of plants in nature is important. Many animals eat plants and also use them for shelter and cover. If plants die because they can't meet their basic needs, the animals that depend on them will also be affected. While on your scavenger hunt today, think about the actions you can take to make sure a wide variety of plants continue to survive out in nature. One easy way to have a positive impact is to not pick plants or flowers in parks or other wild places. By leaving them grow, they can make seeds for future plants. Also, many animals, including pollinators, need the plants for food. By not picking them, we can keep habitats healthy for wildlife. On behalf of Jefferson County Open Space, I want to thank you for joining us for this video. I hope you had fun exploring nature and discovering the incredible ways plants and animals are uniquely adapted to survive and thrive in their habitats.